So it's a bit warmer today. The wind's coming from the south. That's uh, that's impressive. It's been pretty cold and rainy here recently, but it's going to get cold again. So we're just kind of in this spring pattern of warmer temperatures, cold temperatures. I've been running the wood stove at night. The uh, yeah, I don't know. It's getting down into the 30s, so I run it at night. And then during the day, I run a little space heater off and on. It's not too bad. Right now, I don't have to run it at all. So the other day, it rained. Well, four days straight, it rained. So the well was dirty. So I showed you that we had to flush it out, and it was dirty. So I flushed it out, and it was okay. Well, then the next day, it was dirty again. Not real dirty, just a little bit. So the ground must have slowly dripped in overnight. So I flushed it out one more time. We'll see how that did. So yesterday I told you that the uh, hen ate a couple eggs of hers, you know, the broody hen. So we're down to four eggs that she's nesting on. So we're gonna see if there's any more missing today. See how we're doing. <coughs> There's sirens going on everywhere. Mm. Well, there's four eggs there. My hand went on them. I didn't check to see if they were actually hers or if she's taking in a new one. So, nope, they're all hers. So that's good. Sorry about the camera. It's, it's hard to do all this with one hand. Must be a fire somewhere. There was a big fire down the road a while back. The smoke was terrible. Yeah, that's a fire. All those fire trucks, I can see them running by. So, people keep burning things. It's springtime, so it's all nice and warm, and they want to go out and do things. But it, the wind just isn't cooperating. You shouldn't be burning anything in this kind of temperature. My app, weather app, keeps telling me there's... What is that? Red warnings? I think they call it red warnings. So, we got four eggs so far. Now I'll get the rest tonight. We're getting about... Well, that egg looks almost white. It's supposed to be blue, but... I've not seen one that white before. Yeah, we got one over there nesting, so... There's one over there nesting. So that's five, six. So what we're seeing is 10 one day, eight to 10 one day, and six the next day. So that's not too terrible bad. And I don't know, it just, since that one has been roosting, they've been putting the darn things everywhere. So I don't know, maybe they're hiding them. So I'm gonna check the water again and fill the tank. Still baby in my old generator here. Still baby in my old generator until it dies and we'll use the new one. I'm pretty excited about using a new one, but I'm not gonna use it until this one dies. I put this on a brick. Feel like uh, it needed to come off the ground. And that has kept the rain from getting down in there so much. So I'm taking the cover off again because it just doesn't get enough oxygen to uh, run that well pump anymore. Uh, it might today, it's warm enough today it might. So I just opened up the uh, air filter cover and somebody said that uh, I have the wrong air filter on and I agree. Uh, if you get the red one, uh, air or I said air filter, I meant gas filter. If you get a red one, those are for gravity drain. This is not really gravity drain. It's supposed to be for a fuel pump type the problem is, is the hoses in here are way too small for the red fuel filter. So this is working fine. I, you can see inside of there's plenty of gas. I don't have much problems with this one.
not much I can do about it. It's, it's always done it, so I just put oil in it when it needs it. That's all. That's the only problem this generator's ever had, and it's like four years old. So I'm gonna go up here. We're gonna check to see if the water's dirty. I got my bucket, and if it's not dirty, then I'll fill the uh, water tank. I should have turned down the faucet a little bit. I don't want to run the well dry. It's got about a six gallon a minute recovery rate on the well. So that's not too bad, six gallons a minute. But the thing is, is the pump can pump 15 gallons a minute. So it runs out of water pretty quickly. I don't know, 10 minutes or so when it's all the way open. So since I don't have a tank on it, the uh, pressurized tank, I have to throttle it manually. It's not hard to figure out. Five gallons a minute is what I put it at. So it should take about a minute or so to fill a bucket, a five gallon bucket. Uh, but now I've got it where I, I can see how fast it's flowing. I know which direct, how, you know, where the, now I know where the knob needs to be positioned and I don't have to time it out anymore. I've got it all figured out. Yeah, I think this water's clean. So I'll fill this bucket up. We'll give it to the chickens for uh, water. Or no, I could probably take this inside. Carolyn's doing laundry right now. I'll do it. I'll take it inside for her. That's what I'll do. Okay, so the water's clean. I'm pretty satisfied. So I'll just fill the tank. And the reason I want to make sure that the water is clean on this is I don't want to clog my filters too fast. I like for my filters to last about three months. These house filters here. They can last three months that's that's ideal but you know you get about 200 gallons if the water's dirty i'm really proud of my water tank i can't express or, well my whole water system can't explain it how happy i am with it uh, when i built it when i built it I got a lot of criticism and the first year it did freeze up and so uh, people felt justified in, my, in their criticism but I knew I just needed to work it a little bit more with some ventilation and once I had the ventilation in place this summer it's done amazingly well this winter it did amazingly well so it's not that I feel pride in in uh, like saying ha ha I told you it's just I'm really excited that it works I, like I said can't explain it I know my system takes a little bit of effort but it's really not bad and to be off-grid it's just not that bad the I know other off-gridders that have the same, a similar system as to me, and they run theirs off generators also. So I don't feel terribly bad about doing it that way. The uh, and I think a lot of them got their idea from me. Well, I'm pretty sure one of them did actually. So, but the problem is they have tanks, so they have a regular well system with a well house, and so they have to fill a tank. Well, the tank freezes. Now, a lot of people say, well, insulate, insulate. Insulate only works if you have a heat source. It's like your house. Your house still gets cold, even though it's insulated. So you got to heat it, and the, the insulation holds that heat in. That's all the insulation does. So eventually, your well house is going to get cold, no matter how well you insulate it. This is insulated here, all this styrofoam, that's insulation. But it still froze the first year. Uh, cause it didn't have a good heat source. I did have heat going to it, but not a good heat source. Now I got it rigged up where it works pretty well. So yeah, Carolyn's doing laundry right now. So I asked her, where can I put the water? So she wants it in this one sink. It's got dirty water in it. 
what she does is she only does about three pieces of laundry four pieces of laundry in a bucket on these cold temperatures so I give her a full sink full of water huge sink full of water and she washes several loads of clothes in her bucket it's hard to explain so this is the water that she's using to wash with and it looks a little dingy but remember she's only washed about but remember she's only washed three or four articles of clothes in this so she'll take the water and continue washing clothes with it just like your washing machine has you know a couple dozen pieces of clothes in it so it doesn't make sense to just use a fresh bucket of water for three pieces of clothes every cycle so that's her theory and I agree it's it's not unsanitary And that bucket there will just dilute the water even more. I don't know if I explained it well, but I can assure you somebody's going to say, oh, that's gross. You're using dirty water to wash your clothes. So are you, is, is what I'm trying to say. When you use your wash machine, you use about the same amount of water as we do for a couple of dozen pieces of clothes. And Carolyn's doing the same thing. Same amount of water for a dozen pieces of clothes. And then she uses clean water for the rinse cycle so uh, just little shortcuts to save on water and effort the other day I was telling you that we've been using these buckets of water to flush our toilet with it saved us a ton of water in the tank and we don't have to bleach that water so it's a uh, just comfort conser it's conservation although we don't need to conserve it does take a little bit of gas to run the generator to pump the water it takes time to pump the water so I can already tell that we have used about half as amount of water as we normally do uh, not flushing the toilet with the, the tank so that's well let's see that's uh, that's about 50 gallons of water so that's five tablespoons of bleach that we're saving every two days or whatever that is so uh, just conservation everywhere you can go. What was it? Maybe 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I owned a house. We owned it for 10 years. Uh, prior to that, I rented mostly. I didn't own anything, but then we bought that old house. It was a 100-year-old home when we bought it. And I know it was 100 years old because there was a newspaper article of our house that uh, was given to us. It was with the first house in the town or something like that. And the guy who owned the house, they named the city after her. Well, it was actually a, a, uh, a village is what it was called. But anyway, so there was a picture of it. And it was a cheap house, but we owed payments on it. Every month we had to pay payments. Uh, they took money out of the paycheck, out of the payment each month to pay the insurance and the taxes. And of course, we had uh, city electric, city water, city sewer. We had all everything was city. And I don't know. I just at the time I was, I guess, happy with the house. But I was always afraid to do anything to it. Afraid that it would devalue the house. You couldn't do anything. And you know, so you got to have resale value. You got to have the resale value just in case you know you have to sell the home. Then you. Uh, you want to make sure you get enough out of it to pay for the loan that you got on it. So you, everything was an improvement. You're always constantly improving. You couldn't just live in it. You know, we added a front, uh, we fixed up the front porch. We added a closed in back porch. Eventually I put solar panels on it, but I never knew of, you know, back then I was a conspiracy theorist. And I always thought, you know, something happens. I still got to rely on water and sewer. So here though, there's a quite a bit of pride in having it all pay for it. It's all mine. And I wish I could explain it better than that, but I can't. That, that, that's about as best I can explain it. I think about the water 
and the heat, you know, the, all the firewood. I think about the little house, and it's, it's all mine. Really, nobody can take away from me. Somebody's going to say, yeah, you got to pay taxes. Yeah, I got to pay $40 a, month, a year on taxes. You're right. Uh, if I can't figure out how to make $40, I'm in serious trouble, I guess. It, it's a ridiculous argument. It, it's just not even worth mentioning. But it is. It's, it's just incredible. It, it's all mine. It's all easy to fix. And I understand how everything works here. That's the thing. If something breaks, I built the house. I know how to fix it. I, I, I repaired the well. I know how to fix it. I, this pump, this tank, it's mine. I know how to fix it. It's not. Everything was designed so I could easily fix it, as a matter of fact. Uh, the wood heat, I think about that about as much as I think about the water system. And it's just, it's so neat to have free heat, free, I don't know, it's just constant comfort. I never have to be uncomfortable in the winter. So, I hope I, so if you'll check out this up next box, that'll take you over my other channel, I'd really appreciate it. So, I hope I can inspire you to have a real comfort. Then you know everything is yours when you live in your dream. Thanks for watching.